Hello everyone and welcome to another very interesting game from round 3 of the United States uh, 2018 Championship. Uh, here we have a game between Jeffrey Xiong and uh, Fabiano Caruana. Now you already seen a couple of videos about uh, Xiong uh, on my channel. Uh, we had that one against uh, Awander Liang I believe and uh, the one against uh, Magnus Carlsen. And uh, here he has the white pieces against the uh, World Chess Championship challenger Fabiano Caruana. Uh, Jeffrey Xiong is the United States' uh, third youngest grandmaster after a Wonder Liang and Samuel Sevian. Uh, in 2016, he won the World Junior Chess Championship title, and uh, also in 2016, he was the wild card in the United States Championship, where he won uh, an excellent sixth place uh, out of 12 contenders. That's uh, that's amazing for for a 16 year old. And uh, today, uh, well. Uh, he's 18 years old and uh, only a month uh, before the United States Championship uh, he won the very strong um, St. Louis Spring Classic with a rating performance of uh, I believe it's 2819. So pretty unbelievable results and here uh, a true test of skill for him uh, he faces Fabiano Caruana. And finally a game where we don't see the French winner uh, but rather a, a nice Benoni. So let's see the game. Uh, d4 by Jeffrey and knight to f6, knight to f3, e6, so a bit of a transposition into the Benoni, c4, uh, c5, and now we do have d5, d6, uh, knight to c3, e captures, c captures, and now g6, so the full Benoni, modern variation. Uh, and here uh, Jeffrey goes for bishop to f4. Uh, if you remember from my Tal Botvinnik series, in, in game 2 of their match, Botvinnik went for uh, bishop to g5. And then later Tal, after he developed, played h6, g5, kicked the bishop all the way to g3, and then uh, played knight to h5 and uh, grabbed that bishop and opened Botvinnik, uh, Botvinnik's h-file. And after a long serious struggle, that game ended in a draw. Uh, Jeffrey, it seems, does not uh, approve of Botvinnik's idea. He goes bishop to f4. Uh, bishop to g7, now comes e3. Uh, we have castles, h3, and uh, queen to e7. Uh, knight to d2, preparing to transfer the knight, perhaps to c4. If 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 allowed, then the d6 pawn could become seriously under attack. Uh, so Fabi immediately goes for the bishop. Uh, knight to h5, bishop to h2. Now you can see how very useful the h3 uh, move was. Not only stopping any bishop to g4 ideas, but also making room for the bishop on h2. And now comes f5. So uh, now knight to c4 will be will be met by uh, simply removing the queen. Uh, we have bishop to e2, uh, f4 now, and uh, I, I already on move uh, on move 12 we have a very interesting position. Uh, what do you do here? Well, the problem with this obvious bishop captures on h5. I mean, why wouldn't you do it? Uh, is that uh, Fabiano can simply play f captures on e3, uh, and now. Your knight is under attack, your bishop is under attack, and white, black will definitely win back his piece. Uh, but what do you do here as black? Of course, if you capture, then pawn captures here, and then your bishop will still be under attack. And if you play f captures uh, here, then you get bishop captures on c3, pawn captures, and now g captures on h5. And uh, you're not going to castle kingside as the rook is uh, controlling the f-file. You definitely don't want to go queenside. The queenside is all shattered. Uh, you can see this e3 pawn is very weak. The queen is attacking it. It's a very dangerous position for white. And uh, in, in, in a practical game, white does not want to play this. Uh, so after f4, uh, we have castles by Jeffrey. And Fabi goes f captures on e3. Uh, we have knight to d to e4, so a pawn sacrifice. Uh, we have e captures on f2, and now king to h1. Uh, bishop captures on c3, and uh, now again you don't have time for an in-between move with bishop captures here, because the knight on e4 is hanging, so you do have to capture this bishop with the knight. Uh, knight captures, and now knight to g7, finally getting, uh, getting that knight away from h5, not allowing the bishop to capture it. Uh, and uh, here there's this very annoying f2 pawn, uh, Fabi pushed all the way to f2, and you have to get rid of it. Uh, but uh, getting rid of it uh, will give Fabi some very important tempos uh, to activate his pieces and get back into the game. So bishop to f3, now the rook will be able to capture the pawn. Uh, knight to d7, rook captures on f2, and knight to e5. So now the knight occupies an excellent central square. If white wants to eliminate it, he will have to give up his strong dark square bishop. Uh, rook to e2, now pinning this knight, also with a double attack on it, and now knight to f5. 
and now if uh, white plays a slow move uh, this knight is coming to d4 and then white's position will be very difficult to play so uh jeffrey doesn't allow this he plays bishop captures on e5 we have d captures on e5 and d6 uh he decides to sacrifice a pawn here to activate his pieces as as much as he can uh, so knight captures on d6 you can't go queen captures on d6 because then simply queen captures knight captures and white wins back the pawn on e5 with the rook uh, so this was the idea uh, knight captures on d6 we have queen to d5 this comes with check uh, knight to f7 now now the knight from f7 blocks check and also uh, there's a double defense of d5 pawn so fabi is so fabi still keeps his pawn uh, knight to e4 now going with a double attack on the c5 pawn and there's no way to really defend the c5 pawn so uh, jeffrey will win back the c pawn uh the problem is what do you play here as black uh well if you play something like bishop to e6 as you see you can't defend the c5 pawn maybe you just want to give it away uh, the problem is after queen captures queen captures and knight captures now your b7 pawn is also gonna fall and there's no real way to, the, to defend it the knight and the bishop are attacking it if you play b6 of course you lose the rook here uh, so, after knight to uh, e4, Fabi simply played rook to b8, getting the rook out of this uh, nasty a8 square, and this, this will allow him to push b6 uh, when the queens come off the board. Uh, queen captures on c5, queen captures, knight captures, and now the simple b6, which is now possible as the rook is no longer on a8. Uh, knight to e4, and bishop to f5. So, uh, after all is said and done, Fabi is up a piece, uh, uh, Fabi is up a pawn, and it's a very important uh, and a very strong passed e pawn. Uh, knight to c3, rook b to d8, and we have a4 now. Uh, Jeffrey is hoping for a5 to mess up this, uh, this very nice uh, uh, pawns on the queen side, uh, but Fabi pushes a5 himself. Uh, we have bishop to d5, now pinning uh, this knight, so now rook captures an e5 is a threat. Uh, so rook f to e8, defending the e-pawn. Now comes bishop captures, king captures, and now rook to f1. Uh, with the threat of g4 to win the bishop uh, on f5. Uh, king to e6, uh, getting the king out of the way, and now rook to e1, threatening the e-pawn. Uh, and here Fabi repeats uh, king to f6, we have rook to f1, and king back to e6. Uh, rook f to e1, and now if uh, Fabi would continue king to f6, we would have a draw by threefold repetition, but Fabi doesn't want uh, doesn't want this, so he plays king to d6. Uh, rook to e3, uh, we have king to c6, and now knight to b5. Uh, king uh, Rook to e7, now comes g4, uh, and bishop to d3. Uh, bishop to d3 with the idea of not allowing this rook to come to c3, also, oops, sorry, uh, also with ideas that later uh, this bishop is coming to c4 and b3 to attack d a4 pawn. As the a4 pawn is on a light square, Fabi has a light square bishop. This is excellent for Fabi. Uh, knight to c3. Uh, we have bishop to c4. Now comes rook to c1 and king back to b7. Does, Fabi doesn't want his king to occupy the same, uh, uh, the same file as the rook. Uh, rook to e4 attacks the bishop. Now comes rook to d4. He offers the exchange of rooks. King g1. Uh, and now bishop to b3 uh, with a double attack on the a4 pawn so definitely now uh, th this would be very dangerous uh, king to f2 first rook to d2 check uh, rook blocks as now the b2 pawn was attacked rook to f7 check uh, king to e3 and now rook back to d4 now again attacking the a4 pawn uh, knight to b5 attacking the rook rook goes all the way back uh, you have to be very careful, of course you don't want to play rook captures here, then simply knight to, knight to d6 check would win the rook on f7. Uh, so you, first you have to go back, now we have knight back to c3 and now rook to f4. And now there is uh, no way to defend the a4 pawn anymore. Uh, rook to d2, we have rook to d4 first, uh, rook back to f2 uh, and now finally bishop captures on a4. So uh, now Fabi is up two pawns, and this is now this is now pretty much unplayable. Uh, rook to f6, uh, still hoping for some ideas. Maybe knight captures on a4 with rook to c6, maybe to create some perpetual ideas. Uh, but simply bishop to c6, and after bishop to c6, uh, Jeffrey Xiong resigned the game. So uh, a second victory in a row for for Fabiano Caruana, which joins the lead in the United States Championship. Uh, and I'm still gonna wait, wait a bit uh, with the results and uh, with the standings. Maybe after, maybe after, maybe after the today's round, I, I will start showing them.
Uh, here, uh, Jeffrey Xiong resigned because now there's really nothing to do. You're down two pawns. Uh, you could try something like rook captures, king captures, knight e2 check to win back the rook, but uh, I mean, rook e7, the rook is coming. The, there's there's really no counterplay here, so it would only it would only be torture. After bishop to c6, he resigned. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and there is no one uh, after this is round three. There is no one with who is three out of three. So unfortunately, no one will be winning the Fisher Award uh, for winning the tournament with a perfect score. But uh, such a thing uh, in today's chess is is really unthinkable. Maybe, but maybe next year, who knows? So yeah, uh, I would like to thank Nikolai Dobrev, John Roberts, and Emery Jiang for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with another interesting video, hopefully. Thank you all.